I'm going to read a couple verses so the ushers can sit down. And I appreciate them honoring the decorum and practice the ushers. And I really do appreciate the ushers. Thank you so much for the ushers and their commitment. Even Sister Mona's on the wall today. Amen. She ain't come down yet. Amen. She like to be a mom. She can't come down. Amen. Amen. But, um, and I stole one of them. I think Jennifer's probably in the nurse today. So they get mad. They say, every time we get a good usher, you steal one. <laughs> Amen. So God's good. Revelation chapter 22, Jesus said these words in, in verse 12. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. You need to think about that. And then in verse 20, uh, John writes, And he who testifies to these things says, Surely I come quickly, amen, even so come, Lord Jesus. So I want to use my thought this morning. The end is coming, thank God. Tell me that by the hand neighbor. The end is coming. The end is coming. Thank God. Thank God. You really ought to thank God that the end is coming. You really ought to thank God that things are coming to an end. Whether you know it or not, and whether you think about it or not, everything that you see, everything that you know is coming to an end. It's going to end. That house you live in, that car you drive, that, that, that job where you work, that, that health you have in your body, is all coming to an end. Larry? <laughs> I'm a relatively young, 66 years old, but what the hard now, I can see every day is coming to an end. More things hurt. More things are getting to the point that doctors can't fix it. It's coming to an end. It's coming to an end. It's coming to an end. And no matter what I do, no matter what medicines I take, no matter how often I go to the doctor, it's still coming to an end. But I've learned at 66 years old to say it's coming to an end. Thank God. It's coming to an end. Whatever is bothering me, whatever is worrying me, whatever is troubling me, whatever is hurting me, thank God it's coming to an end. It's going to be over after a while. It's coming to an end. And God's message to us today is that we don't have to be worried about the end. We don't have to be worried about how things are going to end. And we don't have to be bothered and troubled about how things are going to end. You see, most of the time, when we think about the end, we, we worry about how things are going to end. Uh, what's going to happen to my children in the end? And what are they going to experience as they grow older, and what's going to happen to them at the end? We always worry, and we're even bothered because we're afraid of how things are going to end. If you want to scare somebody, just talk about uh, it's going to end. And, and folks are afraid. We look at the world and we see how things are unfolding. We see all these problems. We hear about global warming. We see the problems in the Middle East. We, 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 we hear about terrorists and we all wonder how this is going to end. What's going to happen to me in the end? Thank God it's coming to the end. It's coming to the end. And, and I love God because he wants us to know that things are coming the fact that things are coming to an end ought not to frighten you, it ought not to worry you, it ought not to trouble you, it ought not to bother you, because God said things were coming to an end. He plans for things to end. He fixed things and made things so things would come to an end. In fact, long before Jesus died, in Matthew chapter 24, in the call of worship that Jesus sat down and described to his disciples that things were coming to an end. He told them that everything you see is here. This temple and these buildings and all these folk, everything is coming to an end. You know, when I was younger, I could never imagine that my life was coming to an end. I never imagined that my hair would turn gray, that my that my body would ache, that pain would rack my body, and that I began to have the same ailments and problems that my mama and my daddy had. And I didn't know. I was not aware. I had not considered. Good things were coming to tell your children. You won't be with 
always, things are coming to, to an end. I, I tell my children, I say, listen, you need to look at your mother and I, we're getting older. Things have changed and we're coming to an end. But God is saying to us, we don't have to worry about how things are going to end. We don't have to be bothered or troubled because things are coming to an end. Because God has a plan for the end. And he's a good God, so he has a good plan. I, I, I love God because he didn't want the end to be surprised to us. He wanted us to be aware and to be prepared for the end. You see, Jesus told the disciples, he said, boys, all this stuff is coming to the end. And, and they came to Jesus and said, well, when are these things going to come to the end? And what is going to happen? And Jesus patiently and with detailed description gave them uh, an account of how things. You know, the, the sad thing is Christians. God has given us an opportunity to know how things go in. In fact, in this text, he told John, John, I don't want you to seal this book. I want folks to know how things are going to end. I want them to know what's going to happen at the end. I want them to know what's going to happen between now and the end. And I want them to know that I can protect them and provide for them and keep them and deliver them even until the end. God wants us to know. We ought not to be deceived. We ought not to be discouraged. Uh, we ought to be frightened because things are going to John even said, even so, Lord Jesus. Even though things are coming to an end, even though some things are going to happen between now and then, even though there are going to be plagues and pestilences, did not Jesus be for me? He said there are going to be famines. Is that right? Are there not famines? He said there are going to be pestilences. He said there are going to be wars and rumors of wars. Nations shall rise up against nations and kingdom against kingdom, and people will hate one another, and the love of many will. And the iniquities that will abound because the love of many will grow cold. But, but this way, that's not the end. <laughs> that's the beginning. So what we see now is not the end. It's just the beginning of sorrow. This is not the end. The things are coming. You know, we just finished our study of Revelation chapter, Revelation the entire book. And one of the things that you read in that book, I don't have to worry about the end. I'm not worried about. 2016, I'm not worried about 2017, I'm not worried about the Republicans and the Democrats and the no counts and the no crash, because God says. Right. Donald Trump doesn't have the solution for the end. Hillary Clinton doesn't have the solution for the end. Barack Obama doesn't have the solution for the end. They can't stop the end. And nothing they're doing but either slow down or deviate or keep God in from unfolding the way God planned for it to unfold. Aren't you glad that, that the mercy you may love with Barack Obama at the end is not in his hands? That he can't change the end? You know, God has written a story, by the way, and you can't change it. Jesus told him, Matthew 24, things are coming to me. In fact, he said, there shall be such a great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall ever be. He said, things are going to come get bad. Things will get tough. Things hard. But he said, now don't you worry. Anybody worry about the end? I knew that church. Anybody worry about the end? Listen, listen. We worry so much about tomorrow. I know we worry about the end. And, and, and since tomorrow can't change the end, why worry about tomorrow? Right. Whatever happens tomorrow, whatever you experience, whatever you go through, it's not going to change the end. Right. So if I'm not going to work the end, I'm not going to work at the beginning or the middle or tomorrow. And that's the comfort God has in his word. That he would tell us. We went to Revelation we, from the 7th of January to the 10th of January we started, from the 7th of January to the 20th of October. We verse by verse, chapter by chapter, and saw how God was unfolding things and planning things and doing things, and that all through those things, we did not have to worry about the end, right. or about how things were going to end, or when things were going to end, or what was going to happen at the end. Because God is in control of the end. I say, God, there's no need to be worried. There's no need to be bothered. 
that it, 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 it bothered me that Christians get bothered. But Christians have no reason to be bothered. Can he not say in Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, and say, I, I will never leave you nor forsake you? But if you don't know, you're afraid of what you are. Don't know. But we can know. And, and I love what God did in Revelation 22. He gave a detailed account. And, and God didn't even want to visit. He gave us pictures and symbols. He, he, he gave us symbols and pictures so we could get it. Because he knows sometimes a picture of a thousand words. When he wanted to describe what Jesus was going to look like in the end, he didn't just write it. He gave a picture. He said, his feet would be like grass. His hair would be white like wool. He might be talking literally. These are pictures so you can get the description that he's that he's as white and he's the he's, he's the beginning and the end. He's all, he knows everything. He's all wise. Well, it's thinking like grass because he's judgment. He's pure. He's refined. He will wear robe because he's a judge. That's how he's going to look at the end. Says right. tongue will be two edged sword like lightning. At the end. Brother King John was so frightened by that, he began to tremble. And God told him, Don't you worry, because you ain't got to worry about the end. God wants us to know. In fact, God has said it even to Israel. He said, Listen, I want you to know that I got a good end plan. For those who know me, for those who obey me, for those who obey me, I got a good end. He said, Listen, he said, Listen, I know you're experiencing hard things now. I know you're going through some tough things now. I know you're going through some challenging things now. He said, but listen, I know, Jeremiah 29, 11, the thoughts that I think of you. They're not thoughts of evil. They're thoughts of peace. To give you a good end, a desired end, a glorious end, a joyful end. But I'm thinking about you. What I got planned for you is not evil. What I got planned for you is not bad. My thoughts are this, but not thoughts of evil, but thoughts of peace. To give you an expected, desired, to be desired in. Jesus said a lot of things will happen between now and the end. But he told us that we already got victory. In 1 Corinthians 15, 57, he said, but thanks be to God who giveth us the victory. We already have victory. Not that we don't have victory. He said, but, but thanks be to God who giveth. And when he, when, whenever you see ETH on the end of a verb in the Bible, it means a continual action. Who is constantly, daily, moment by moment, day by day, week by week, year by year, month by month, giving you victory. Who giveth us, not just gave, but giveth now, then, the victory. Then that you don't say, I can be who God says I can be. I can do what God says I can do. I am what God says I am. I am a victor, not a victim. I'm not a victim of my circumstances. I'm a victor over my circumstances. You can't come from any more humble circumstances than I felt about. You can't come from a town that had dirt, muddy roads, muddy paved roads, a house with holes in the roof and holes in the floors, and then you know them towel, roll towels for your, your floor covering. And they were out right quick, you didn't get them up, you put them down on top of it. Yeah. Then that, where are you putting them on top? You didn't worry about moving them. Don't, don't worry about moving them. Yeah. About 15 years ago, 15 years ago, the notion was And you move your chair, you just build straight the thing. <laughs> you're messing up for what? It's going to be a while for me and your daddy to buy another roll, roll, roll this stuff. <laughs> But I wasn't a victim of my circumstances. God gave me victory over my circumstances. Because if you don't yield to your circumstances, and if you don't become like your circumstances, 
And if you don't become negative and bitter and bothered to call up your circumstances, God can give you a victory over your circumstances. The, the devil wants you to be bothered. The devil wants you to be bitter. The devil wants you to be burdened so he can defeat you and let you not run. So you won't know that you got victory. So, so tell your circumstances. God says that he gives me the victory. That nothing can separate me from the love of God. That's right. That nothing too hard for God. So I have victory over my circumstances. I'm not a victim. I am a victor. You know, folks like to make, or you know, he's a victim of his his situation. Only if you let yourself be a victim. God said, "I give you the victory." The end is coming. Don't be afraid. The end is coming. Don't be bothered. The end is coming. Don't be worried. The end is coming. Don't be troubled. The end is coming. Don't be frightened. The end is coming, but be prepared. See, Jesus, God had the disciples remind us in the early church that the end was coming. He didn't want them to get so distracted by life. He didn't want them to get so bothered by the problems of life. He didn't want them to get so tangled up in the stuff of life that they forget. And all that stuff you're bothered by, you're going to pass away. Peter said in 2 Peter 3, 10, heaven and earth will pass away. He said, but the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night. The heavens shall pass away with a fervent great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works the end shall be burned up. Everything you see is going to be burned up. Everything you strive to get and hold on to and got packed up in your shelves and closets and get bars from the old morning, mess with your mother's stuff while you look at that one. All that stuff you're so anxious about. You get caught the bottom. Listen to what he said. Second Peter 2 Peter said, But the devil Lord, when the when the comes, he shall come and the thief in the night. You won't know when he shows up. The heavens shall pass away, all the stuff you see, with a great noise. The elements, the gold, the aluminum, the iron, the silver, the manganese, iridium, <coughs> hydrogen, oxygen, all those elements will pass away, shall melt with the fervent heat. And it works that are therein shall be burned up. All the stuff you put so you work so hard to get. All the stuff you've been become so distracted to have will be burned up. And Peter goes on to say, seeing then that all these things are going to be dissolved, what manner of persons ought we to be in holy conversation in God? He said, because the end is coming, it ought to motivate us to live right. Because the end is coming, it will motivate us to do right. Because the end is coming, it will motivate us to love right. I, I, I'm going to love you because the end is coming. I, I'm going to do what the Lord said do because the end. I may, not, I may not do it because I really am happy with you. I may not do it because I'm pleased with you. I may not do it because I'm pleased with the way you do it. But I'm going to do it because the end is coming. And I want to be able to say, thank God. I ain't got to trust you no more. I ain't got to worry with you no more. I ain't got to argue with you no more. I ain't got to fuss with you no more. I ain't got to bother with you no more. The end is here. Thank God. Because Paul said, there will be folk who like the end, and there will be folk who don't like the end. Paul said, I have no problem with the end. He wrote the young Timothy and said, you don't tell your children, I have no problem with the end. I have no problem with things coming to an end. I'm satisfied when things come to an end. I'm not bothered by it. Martin Luther King said, I'm not worried about enemy. But long before Martin Luther King, Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, I have fought a good fight. I am not worried about the end. I have finished. I have to, I run the race. God told me to run. I finished my course. I did what God said to me. Told me. I finished my course. 
I've kept the faith. I didn't become faithless. I didn't become unfaithful. I kept the faith. Henceforth, when the end comes, they left me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give. But not to me only, but to all those that love the end. Now, Father, I love the end. I'm looking forward to the end. I'm tired of struggling with life. I'm tired of struggling with the challenge of life, the ups and downs of life, the issues of life, and the problems. I'm looking for Pastor, I love Pastor, all those who love is a people. There are some folks who are going to love the same time. There are some folks who wish they never came. The end is coming. That's why we'll be having temptations. Because the end is coming. James said, Blessed the man that endured temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life. The reason you ought not to yield to temptation, and the reason you ought not to give in to temptation, because God said, I'm going to bless those who are faithful in the end. James says, When trials come, don't get upset. Don't get discouraged. Don't get bothered. He said, bless happy the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown at the end which the Lord had promised to them that love. God promised to bless and reward us in the end. Jesus told John to write in Revelation 22, 12. And behold, I come quickly. The end is coming sooner than you think. For some of us, the end could be between now and next Sunday. There are some people who woke up this week and the end came. They were making no plans for the end. They were not prepared for the end. And the end came. You don't know when the end is coming. And he's been coming very often around here lately. If, 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 if as many people died that's attached to family of this church in the last three years that convince you that it's time for you to think about where you are, then nothing will. Because the end is coming in. Mother Emma said he came for some of her family members three times in the last month. A brother, a sister, a grandchild. The end is coming. You're not promised. But one thing. James says, what is your life? It's but a vapor. It appeared for a moment and disappears. You know, the worst of the fog is, by noon it's gone. <laughs> Some of y'all fall. <laughs> but just wait to know, Terry, it'll be gone. Is somebody fogging your way? Somebody fogging your life, just wait to know. James says, we're not promised for one day. The end is coming. And God promises that it comes quickly. And he said, my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. But what we don't even know that God promises to make us rulers and kings at the end. Did you know that? You don't have to run for president. God will make you president. And I would, Brother Larry, I would let nothing get between me and the reward. I won't let nobody mess up my end by all the crazy stuff that goes on in the new. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, to him that overcometh, this is a promise from God, Revelation 321. To him that overcometh, to him that hang in there, to him that is faithful, to him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne. That's a promise. Even as I also overcame and sit down with my father in <coughs> God said, I will make a king built in the kingdom of God in the end. I'm going to be what God wants me to be in the end if I stay faithful to him. Christ came and died on Calvary's cross so you wouldn't have to worry about the end. The ways of sin and death, but 
the gift of God and eternal life. When Mary and Martha thought their brother's life had come to an end, they were discouraged. They were sad. That's why it's sad to me to see Christians sad and Christian people. Cut the end. That's not the end God planned. That's not the end God intended. That ain't the end. I, I'm looking more forward to seeing my mother, my father, and the grandfathers on both sides I've never seen, and grandmother on both sides I've never seen, because it's going to be exciting. The end. I never see them on this side. Oh, but when I get to the other side, and I see them at the end. What a time. What a time. At the end. Mary Martha thought it had ended for that brother Lazarus. And it said, Jesus, you have been here. He wouldn't end. He wouldn't happen this way. Him who you love. Jesus was so unconcerned about the end that when they called him and told him that Lazarus was sick, he didn't head that way. He was like Greg, said he was this morning when he heard there was a shooting at Miles. He didn't get on the car and drive to Miles to see what happened to Jay. He, Greg believed God was already at Miles. And if God was there, he didn't need to be there watching what God was going to do. You don't want folks watching you, but God wants you watching him. Some of y'all don't want to buy that here. Listen, Jesus, you have been here. If you see no lives we're going through, if you see this sickness and this suffering and the death, they wouldn't have happened this way. And now his life has ended. Jesus said, that's not the end. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that lives in me, don't he be dead. That's not the end. Yes, shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Do you want your life to never end? Jesus said, He that believes in me will never die. Old folks say, as long as Jesus lives, I'll never die. They believe in the end. You won't have to worry about condemnation. Indeed. Paul said in Romans 5, 8, 1, there is now no condemnation to them that in Christ Jesus, who walk not the flesh, but that's the spirit. You want to worry about where you're going to live? Indeed. Jesus says, in my father's house, there are a lot of places there. You want to live in Riverland, Lake Forest, Cliff Cove, Peel Hill, Legacy? Happy cold. The whole hot place will live. Old folks say, I'm going to pick me a seat this. <laughs> say, oh, for what's up? I don't care. I just want to pick me a seat. All right. It ain't like out of my football game. All the seats don't make good seats, Terry. <laughs> you want me to sit behind the pole? <laughs> you want me to know the police seat? Three, 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 three levels up. Listen, I got... My wife said, you won't go to a football game unless you get sweets down there. I'm going to go back there get sweets. Don't give me no ticket, they're going to win sweets. <laughs> <laughs> I went to see Baltimore, the Baltimore Coast play Chicago Bears. I had the last row, the last seat on the third deck. I'll tell you a lot about that big. <laughs> I was closer to my car in the parking lot than I was to the game. <laughs> but they all good seats. Jesus says, in my father's house of many mansions. If you were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. And I will come again and receive it to myself. Amen. Let's get personal for a moment. But sometimes we get in church and we think it's a group thing. Are you worried about the end? Don't raise your hand. But when you look in your life and you look at your life's experience and you look at where you are in life, are you worried about the end? Are you worried about how things are going to end? Are you worried about your children's end and how things are going to end for them? 
Well, you can fix that right now. You can fix that right now. Paul said, that will confess, let my the Lord Jesus. And believe in that heart, you got to raise it from the dead. You don't have to worry about me, and I shall be saved. Are you worried about the end? Are you worried about what's going to happen at the end? But more importantly, are you prepared? Don't worry about these folk here, because some of them ain't prepared either. Are you prepared for the end? If you go home tonight, God tell you on the show and say, Sister Brianna, this is the end. Brother Milton, this is the end. Brother Terry, you won't get a chance to go see your mama. One more time, this is. You live right next door, but you can't make it, son. This is the end. This is the end. Look in your own heart, your own mind, your own life, your own testimony. God came to you tonight and said, This is the end. Are you prepared? Well, you don't have to work. You can fix that right there. Jesus said, He that believeth in me will never experience the end. He said, He that believeth in me, there is no kind of blessing. John wrote in John 3 15, 16, 17, and 18, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him will never have an end, will never perish, but have eternal life. He that believeth on him will never even be not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. For he's not believed on the name of the only God, the Son of God. He that has Christ will never even. He that hath the Son hath life. But he that hath not the Son hath not the life. How will it end for you? How will it end for you? It's going to end for you. Some of us is going to end sooner than others. But it's going to end. Hebrews 9, 26 is a point of the man wants to die. It's going to end. And after death, the judgment. It's going to end. David says, we can live 80 years old. It's still going. I'm not really worried about living a long time on this side. I would be prepared to live for other, forever on the other side. I tell you, on my mother's side, we don't have a long life, man. My mother died at 80. My father, 76. My brother, 71. My cousin Claudia, 69. My cousin Nate, at 50. My cousin Jerome, at 23. All first cousins. We don't have a long life, man. So I've decided, I'm not really worried about how long I'm in. I'm worried about how faithful I'm in. Because I'm worried about the end. I will be prepared for the end. The last two years, I've gone from money in the country to other, to funerals for cousins in Florida, Alabama, cousin died in New York. And so I'm reminded, each time I get a call, the end is coming. Jerome has died. Russell's wife died. Bernie's son died. <coughs> Bernie's brother died. Your brother died. Your sister died. Your mother died. Pat's sister died. Dean's brother died. We had one per month from last June. Through this February. At least one cousin. Most of the first cousins. Or children the first cousins. We don't have a long life span. <coughs> so I don't worry about it in a long time. That doesn't bother me. I'm glad the end is coming. I'm looking forward to the end. Because the end is not how long you live, it's whether you live well. 
I can't change my genetics. I said, I wrote my son, and I described him on both sides of the family, genetic diseases. My father had prostate problems. My brother had prostate problems. My mother had high blood pressure. My sisters had high blood pressure. My brother had high blood pressure. My father had two heart attacks. My brother had heart attacks. My sisters have a cyst, my daughters have a cyst. And I wrote my son and I told him things you need to have a check as you get older. You know what he said, Dad? Darn genetics. <laughs> I can't change my genetics. Like a change my turn. <coughs> I'm not sad the end is coming. I'm looking forward to the end. You know why I run as hard as I do as fast as I do playing if my mom there? I ain't got to run long. You may have to run long time. You get tired. I'm going to keep running. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run in. I ain't got a long road to pick. Like picking cotton. I ain't like them long roads. That's why I run as hard as I do, kid. Because I know I ain't got to run long. So I'm going to run hard. So when I get to the end, my wife and I were walking yesterday. And there's a bridge we try to get to. It's, it's but two miles away. And we got to the bridge. I said, we can see the bridge now. We can't go. And she said, no, we can't. I said, we can. We can see. I said, we can see it. We can see it now. Keep going. We can make it to the bridge. I said, no, Jane Brown said, take it to the bridge. Take it to the bridge. <laughs> You'll have to keep walking me to the bridge. <laughs> then I said, now you go get the car and come pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> she said, no, you go get the car and come pick me up. <laughs> We saw some deer on the path of walking. She said, now I'm going to hold on to you. I said, well, I'm going to do that job. You're going to get drugs. I'm going to run. run from the deer, too. She said, I just hope it ain't counted. I said, I hope for your sake it ain't either. Because I can't run you. You're going to be afraid of the end. You'll be bothered by the end. Doctor told me, he said, you got cataracts. Vision don't get dark. I'm not worried about you. I'm going to see all the care and all the care for God. So what I can't see, I ain't going to worry about what I can't see. The difference between me and you, I know what's wrong with me. You think it's wrong with you. But if you live, it's not wrong with you. It, it's going to break. For the first 20 years, I went to this doctor. He said, oh, nothing. Everything didn't check. And they said, oh, this is out of spit. This is out of spit. I've been coming all the years. You never tell me no more. Every time I come here, there's something wrong now. I said, this ain't right. This ain't right. I'm going to stop coming here. I tell my barber. I said, listen, my father come out here. I had for hair. It was all black. He going to mess me up. I said, they'll put you out of business. I said, that's just the end's coming. That's all it is. Solomon described it in the book of Please Ask. He can tell you how the end's going to come. He said, the weather's guy, yeah, it's going to get dark. There's strong me and you're going to shake. That's, that's your, your legs. Like Grinders don't see. That means your teeth don't fall out. He gave you a description of the end. But you don't have to worry about the end. And if I don't have to worry about the end, why can't I worry about tomorrow? If he's going to take me kill me, don't you think he'll kill me through the morning? He's not going to let nothing happen to me. Until the end. And at the end, he's going to deliver me. Do you have that confidence in God? Let's stand for a moment. You're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, you're Lord and Savior.